general idea is excellence. Excellence. In the New Testament, you find it five times. Three times, it refers to God's excellence. Twice, it refers to human excellence as we seek to be more godlike. And so years ago we started this award and we would give it occasionally to someone who had demonstrated Christian excellence in some way or another. You may recall in 2 Peter chapter 1 where Peter says, add to your faith, most of our translations say virtue. There's that word, excellence. Add to your faith, excellence. But the passage that sticks out in my mind and the one from which this particular word arises as a, an idea of an award comes from Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Now, if you remember, Paul in, in, in Philippians is in the worst situation you can imagine. He's literally in chains. He's in prison. And yet, from prison, he writes his most joyous letter. And when he comes near the end of it, and he's ready to say, okay, now, this is what's really important. He uses that word, finally. Finally. This is Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent, or praiseworthy. Think about such things. We could have picked the word for excellence. We could have picked the word for praiseworthy. It doesn't matter which word we use. The fact is, we're going to honor someone today who in so many ways has emulated each and every one of those characteristics so that when we look at him, we say, this is what God intends us to be. And there's the background of that word, arete. This is going to be the first of many such awards. Paul and Debbie came up with the idea of giving this particular one. I suggested the word then. And I suggested that we not make this a one-time thing, but that we make it an ongoing thing, where as a congregation, periodically, we look out among ourselves and we find someone who has demonstrated Christian excellence, and we say, we want to be more like you because you're like Jesus. Dan's going to leave us a word of prayer. In the opening verses of Psalm 121, we read, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Would you bow with me? Almighty God, loving Father, We approach you thanking you for the blessings of this day. But we come to you specifically at this time to thank you for your servant, Jack Rowe. For Jack, for Barbara, for their family, siblings, children, grandchildren and generations to follow. Dear God, as we spend time in your word, we struggle at times to understand fully the nature, the breadth, the scope of your love. And at times, we may not fully appreciate how you provide for us. But you do fully. Dear God, we're mindful of Jack. 
with the wisdom of years, the gray hair, the loss sustained, the struggles endured and overcome. The blessing of marriage of children and those who follow. And we realize that he is who he is today as your work. As you provide for him, you provide for us. And dear God, we thank you for this. We praise you for creating us, sustaining us, and providing for us, not this moment or this lifetime, but for all eternity. Dear God, as we consider Jack, we understand that he is so influenced by his wife, <clears throat> by his family, And as we pause today in this close family to remember and to reflect, we consider those times when we may have experienced a loss. And he provided the comforting hand. The times when there are those seeking where he provided the silent, reassuring instruction. Those who struggled, and he provided the wisdom of yours, not his wisdom, but your wisdom. As he cared for those who aged, but as he also looked to the youth, the generations of today and tomorrow as he provided, as he encouraged, as he provided a sense of importance as to that which was lasting. And your God, as he was also able to provide vision for this place, for this time, and for all eternity. And your God, we come together as his family, as your family, to remember all that he was and continues to be able to do. Understanding that he recognizes fully, as we hoped him, that we are ultimately in your hands, that you bless us richly, as you call us to purpose. And dear God, as we consider the prospect of Jack leaving this desert community, we pray that it will be for a short time, that he would continue to return, that as he looks to move to Oklahoma, we pray that we would never forget his uplifting his words of encouragement, his challenges, but we pray that you would bless him with many more years of good health, of opportunities to be with family as he should be and as you call him to be. And I pray that he would be a blessing on them as he has been on us. And your God for <coughs> Jack's family, those here and those that have gone before, I pray that we would all be mindful of the hope and the assurance we have to all be together again to spend an eternity with you. This we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I wasn't quite able to confirm that these were Jack's favorite songs, but uh, 
You can ask him and he, today he'll say yes. <laughs> Let's sing together number 608. He took my burdens all away up to a brighter day. He gave me a song, a wonderful song. A wonderful song I now can sing in my heart joy bells ring. He gave me a song, a wonderful song. He gave me a song to sing about. He lifted me from sin and doubt. Oh, praise His name. He gave me a song to sing about. He left it me from sin and doubt. Oh, praise his name. He is my king. A wonderful song he is to me. Jack Rowe was born on December 15, 1930. That means he just had a birthday a little while ago. He grew up as an only child in western Oklahoma. His parents said, he's enough. <laughs> he lived on a 160-acre cotton farm. His nearest neighbor lived half a mile away. He rode his horse to school. The one schoolhouse held grades 1 through 12, and when Jack graduated in 1948, he was part of the largest graduating class up to that time. There were 11 of them. <laughs> Four boys and seven girls. Teenager Jack found a job working in the oil fields of Texas. He came back to Oklahoma, met some of his old friends. They were going to sign up for the Navy and wanted him to join them. He said, you must be crazy. But they talked him into riding with them over to the depot and convinced him on the way that he should join the Navy and be with them. But there was a problem. You see, Jack didn't qualify. Regulations for sailors at that time had to weigh 120 pounds. He only weighed 118. <laughs> Uh, but they weren't going to ship out to the next day, so they said, we'll give you one day to gain those two pounds. And so Jack said he ate like crazy. When they weighed him in the morning, he just barely tipped the scales at 120. So Jack became a part of the Navy, served for 21 years in the Navy, retiring as a chief warrant officer on January 1st, 1970. Part of his job was he worked with admirals. He would take care of their correspondence and other writings he would do for them. He would schedule their appointments. One year, working with those admirals, he flew over 200,000 miles. Wow. That's a lot. After three or four to four years in the Navy, Jack was stationed in Long Beach, and he went with a girl to the house of her friend, Barbara Wilson. After their visit, they left, and Jack realized that he left his watch at Barbara's house. Now, he didn't tell me if that was on purpose or accident. <laughs> <laughs> 
He, so he called to see if he could come by and pick up the watch, and she agreed. So he came to pick up the watch and asked Barbara, are you doing anything later on? He said, no, I have nothing in particular. So Jack invited her to have a hamburger with him. She agreed, and Jack says he fell in love with Barbara over a hamburger. <laughs> Debbie asked him, did you love her so much because she was such a strong woman? And Jack said, no, I fell in love with her because she was so cute. <laughs> then I found out she was a strong woman. <laughs> so on February 3rd, 1952, Oki Jack married Barbara Woolston from Minnesota that had met together in California. Due to Jack's frequency, God works in weird ways, doesn't he? Due to Jack's frequent deployments away from home, Barbara basically raised the two children, Robert and John, and that's why, according to Jack, they're such good men. Barbara was born in Minnesota, but graduated from high school in Riverside, California. She worked a lot while they were married, often in managerial positions. While Jack was going to college, Barbara was the personal secretary to the beginning of what is now called Costco. You may remember, a long time ago, there was a place called Price Club. Remember Price Club? Costco bought them out. Well, Price Club was not named Price Club because the prices were so good. It was named Price Club because the owner was Saul Price and his favorite secretary was Barbara. They have two sons, Robert and John, four grandchildren, Brian, Jennifer, Jacqueline, and Jordan, and six great-grandchildren. Jack and Barbara celebrated their 50th anniversary in 2002, and Barbara passed away just a few weeks before their 60th in 2012. Well, Jack, after he retired from the Navy, went to school at San Diego State University. In 1973, he earned his BS degree in accounting. Jack took his degree and completed a CPA certificate to become a principal with a real estate development company specializing in long-term health care. He retired in 2007. That's great to talk about the wonderful things he was able to accomplish, but one of the things we want to focus on is what he did accomplish spiritually. So let's talk there. Jack had grown up attending a conservative Church of Christ with his parents. He was baptized at the age of 14. Once he left home, his spiritual journey took a change of direction. Although his dedication to God lagged, God never gave up on him. During the Korean War, Jack and Barbara were already married by then, his ship was on a seven-month tour when it was caught in a typhoon. Now, I don't know what a typhoon is, so I asked Jack, and Jack said, well, in the Atlantic, they're called hurricanes. In the Pacific, they're called typhoons. So this is a mighty big storm. He wasn't sure that he would live through that storm. And so he went back to his spiritual roots and prayed and prayed. The typhoon passed, and Jack didn't respond really strongly then, but God was deeply implanted in his mind. Jack retired from the Navy and started going to school. The boys, by that time, had already left home, and Jack and Barbara were, were in, about in their 40s at that time, so the kids were, were pretty big. Materially, Jack and Barbara were in great shape, but their relationship was drifting apart. They were di driving down the street in San Diego one day and drove past the Church of Christ sign. Barbara turned to Jack and asked, you want to go? You can almost hear Jack say, are you crazy? <laughs> can't do it with his inflection. But. Barbara said, we got to do something. It happened to be a Wednesday night, so they pulled into the parking lot and attended the Wednesday night class. <laughs> they liked it, so they went back again on Sunday morning, and they haven't missed since. When Jack says God is good all the time, he really means it. Jack explains that one of the best experiences in his life was that he was able to see his wife baptized, his sons baptized, his daughter-in-law is baptized, and his grandson's baptized. Jack and Barbara became involved with the San Diego Christian Foundation. Jack was on the board for 38 years and was the chairman for 12. The San Diego Christian Foundation, for those of you who don't know, is an organization in San Diego that supports a Christian school of 250 students, a youth camp. They sponsor the San Diego Bible Bowl, built and maintain, maintains Canyon Villas, which is a retirement facility that has helped thousands of elderly people. The foundation has also provided money to help people and churches to inspire them to be better. 
During this time, Jack was attending the Pepperdine Lectureships when he was approached by the president of Oklahoma Christian University to become a member of their board of directors. Although Jack was interested in higher education, he, he refused at that time. A new president for OCU came out to San Diego and instead of asking him to be in the board, asked him to set up a golf game. So they went and played golf and by the end of the golf game, Jack was a member of the board. <laughs> Jack served on the boards for both Oklahoma Christian University and Cascade College in Oregon. Jack and Barbara continued to be servants to those in the congregation wherever they worshiped. Jack has served at an elder at three congregations, Canyonville and Northern Hills in San Diego. And we snagged him here for the third time to be an elder at Palm Desert. My guess is God ain't done with him yet. I have this picture here because this is the example of the arte that Dale was talking about. This is an old, old chapel in Nebraska. John Smith, a friend of the Rose, recommended um, the Rose as spiritual servants to the president of York Christian College in York, Nebraska. His name was uh, President Wayne Baker. President Baker contacted Jack and Barbara about an old church building, this one, that was built by German settlers in the plains of Nebraska in 1880. It was just sitting there in flat Nebraska, just wasting away. But York was given, College was given the opportunity to secure that old dilapidated church building. John Smith said that he split the cost with them, so Jack and Barbara went to Nebraska to take a look at the old building. Jack asked, what do you think? Barbara responded, well, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. And when Barbara set out to do something, she went all out. You might say that she was a bit headstrong. They agreed to take that old building out of the plains and move it to York, Nebraska. Now who would find a chapel and want to move it to a college campus? This is that old building. As you see, it's about to fall apart. This is the stairway up falling down, ready. Who wants this place? That's the inside of the building front doors of the building from the back of the auditorium. And this is the, the front part of the auditorium, what it looked like there. Here they finally got it lifted off of the ground and placed on the truck that's going to take it out. There we go. There it is up on the truck. Jack tell me, told me there were 32 wheels on the truck that got transported. This is a big thing that they're doing. There you see it, <laughs> being transported. That old chapel, those flat fields in Nebraska. Um, there they're moving along. I want you to notice that there's snow on the ground. They had to move it in the snow, but because it was so hard to move and took so long that they couldn't take over the streets and they had to get their crops in and taken care of. So they were forced to move it during the snow. And getting over those railroad tracks was not so easy making sure that would happen. There is the old building out in the field. And here it is working towards York, They're entering into York, Nebraska. Ah, now you can see they had to take down the wires so that it could get through because it was so tall. It looks like they had a police escort and the people walking were going faster than the truck was. <laughs> it took them two days to go eight miles. There it is as it enters in to, um, on the street. And here it is entering into the York College campus. See how tall it is compared to those wires? There they have it set down next to its foundations. And a little while later, that's what it looked like when the trees began to blossom. Still an old, dilapidated, ugly eyesore but Barbara wasn't done yet. Barbara decided that the chapel needed to have stained glass windows in all the windows. And so she made that happen. And this is what it looked like. <coughs> There's the side view, the back view. And recently my daughter Rachel was there and this is the picture of what it looks like today with the trees trimmed away. 
Beautiful. Who would have the foresight to look at something that ugly and make it so beautiful? Sounds like God, huh? Looks at us so ugly and makes us so beautiful. The dedication took place at 10 a.m. The sun came out and shone through those stained glass windows that Barbara had insisted upon, and it projected a raw, a, the picture of a cross through the light on the opposite wall. There was an elderly man in the audience who was crying. He said that he had grown up learning about God in that building. He had been baptized in that building. He was married in that building, and he wanted to have his funeral in that building. President Wayne Baker leaned over and asked him, have you picked out a date yet? <laughs> Barbara told Jack that this prayer tap chapel at York College was perhaps the best thing that they had accomplished in their lifetime. If you go to that chapel now, you will see this dedication plaque. The dedication plaque reads, this church building was originally constructed by German settlers on the plains of Nebraska in 1880. It was moved to this location in 1999 and renovations were completed in 2004 dedicated to the students, faculty, and staff of York College and to the citizens of York. And on that same plaque underneath it, with appreciation, and the top names are Jack and Barbara Rowe. Arrete. Excellence. We are recognizing excellence so that we might strive to be more excellent ourselves. And we appreciate you, Jack and Barbara for setting the example for us. <clears throat> Let's sing together. If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and turn seem great all the whole day through. There's a silver line that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see it, my friend. Trust in his promises grand. Sing and be happy. Press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you. He will keep your soul. Let all be faithful. Look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Often we are troubled and tired, sick with sorrow and pain. There are others living in sin, blessed with earthly gain. Take new courage, we cannot tell what tomorrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, then your heart truly can sing. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let all be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Oft we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. When it seems our fortunes of earth frown and pass us by. There are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust Him each day, we shall have pleasures untold. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust Him who leads you, He will keep your soul. Let all be faithful, look to Him and pray. Lift your voice and praise Him in song. Sing and be happy today. When we told Rachel and Andrew that we were going to do this for Jack, Rachel said, I can't be there, but I have something I want to say. And hopefully I can get through this. She sent this to me. And um, this is what she wanted you to hear. 
Jack and Barbara Rowe have been an influential, influential part of our lives and on the lives of many we know. Only God knows the length of the blessings they have made on this world, but Andrew and I would like to share a few. Barbara was always a woman I looked up to and admired, especially her strength and her spunk. I loved hearing her stories of life with Jack while their family was young and he was in the military. She had the best attitude about life as a military wife. No pity party for military life, according to Barbara. I remember once Jack and Barbara took my parents, the boys and I, out to lunch at their clubhouse. The boys were about three and four years old and Jack piled them into a golf cart and tore around the golf course over the hills and around the lakes. Barbara sat by me as we watched the boys having the time of their lives, and Jack too. Barbara just laughed and said, well, I hope your boys can swim because Jack sure can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't swim and I didn't share her laughter, but boy, did she find it funny. <laughs> when Barbara found out Andrew and I were engaged, she pulled me aside and said that she and Jack wanted to pay for my wedding dress. What a blessing for us that was. What Rachel doesn't say is that her and Andrew were going to get married at the beach because they didn't have any money. And then when Barbara said that she would pay for a dress, it gave them the option of having a church wedding, which is what she really wanted. Um, let's see. I loved my dress, and it was all because of their generosity. At our wedding, Jack honored us with a beautiful speech. He is such a wonderful man of God. As our lives go forward, we can continue to be blessed by Jack and Barbara. Recently, we went to York, Nebraska to, vi to visit your college where I got my bachelor's degree. We were once again reminded of the generosity of Jack and Barbara as we saw a beautiful country chapel that serves the students of York and the community of York. This country chapel being saved, transplanted onto York campus and restored was hugely due to Jack and Barbara's influence. It brings me so much joy that two of my favorite things, York College and the Rose, are so beautifully and permanently intertwined. Every time I visit York College now, I will be reminded of those two dear friends that I love so much. Thank you, Jack and Barbara, for teaching me how to love honestly and humbly. Love for Andrew, Rachel, Nicholas, Caleb, and Helene Schubin. Okay, Jack, what can I say that's nice? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Actually, I was very honored uh, when they asked me if I could share something about you. So when I first came to this church, I had a plan. I was going to have my five faithful friends. You get that FF, five faithful. And uh, Jack came along and made number six. So he kind of threw that plan of mine out of the water. Um, but you know, Jack, when I think of you, I think of just genuine love. Um, you sought me out. Um, so purposeful. That's another word that comes to mind when I think of you. Very purposeful. Your love, your devotion, and the way that you take care of me. I never knew that I needed someone like you, but there you were. <laughs> and I'm so grateful for that. You love me unconditionally. Um, you know, I, I have a physical father, a biological father, and he is great but I have a spiritual father in you. And uh, we were just joking earlier, but I was thinking about that today. You know, when I get married, you're gonna officiate that marriage. <laughs> 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 right? <laughs> Gotta get on that plan. Uh, 